The British Parking Association, the BPA, it represents private parking companies in the UK. Importantly, only its members can buy your details from the DVLA, which enables them to chase drivers for parking charges. And membership of the association depends on those parking companies abiding by the BPA's code of practice. Yet, we've shown how it fails to kick out members who breach that code. Tonight, we ask, how does the association react when one of its members ignores a judge? XL Parking Services Limited, a BPA-approved operator since 1994. An XL car park at the popular Peel Retail Centre in Stockport. It was here that Martin Cutts pulled up before a shopping trip in March 2010. It just looked like a free car park, like so many of these car parks are in front of the big stores. Just parked up, went into the shop, came out and found that there was a parking charge notice on the windscreen. And that's when I realised that, of course, I'd uh, parked my car at what was a pay and display car park. The average driver would probably just pay up, but Martin is not your average driver. I'm Research Director of Plain Language Commission, so part of our work is to do with clearing up things like poor signs and poor notices and making sure that instructions for consumer products are written in a clear, straightforward way. The BPA Code of Practice states that car park signs must be clear and visible so that drivers have a chance to understand the terms and charges that apply. So I went back to the car park entrance to see where the signs were, where the terms and conditions were. Well, it says on the notice it's pay and display, but the words pay and display are very small. They're only 13 millimetres high. Welcome to the Peel Centre is much bigger. That's the biggest item on the sign. And so inevitably you think, oh, that's nice of them. It's a free car park. Martin appealed against the charge. Excel rejected it and appeared determined to get their money. And there's a string of letters, we call them threatograms in the business, from debt collectors and solicitors and so on. And I just kept saying, well, take me to court, take me to court, I'll fight you in court, which eventually is what they did. The judge did a, an excellent thing, which was to go out to the car park herself. She looked at the signs herself. She said that they weren't adequate. She said they weren't clear. And she found in my favour, so I won the case. After the hearing at Stockport County Court, the judge dismissed Excel's claim and ordered the company to pay Martin's expenses. Now, as a BPA-approved operator, Excel is supposed to be one of the most professional and reputable companies in the business. So what did it do to make sure the same thing couldn't happen again? Uh, absolutely nothing. Today, the signs are still exactly the same. Excel has simply ignored the judge's comments about the size of the wording. The company's managing director, Simon Renshaw-Smith, obviously disagreed with the outcome of the court case. In a letter to an MP, which Watchdog has obtained, he described it as... An embarrassment to the judicial system. And he made some pretty rude remarks about the judge, too, describing her as not fit to serve the civil courts. Strong words. And as for the BPA, incredibly, it doesn't think the signs needed to change either. That's because the 13 millimetre wording does not break the code of practice rules on clarity and visibility. Makes you wonder who actually makes those rules. Well, as a matter of fact, they're drawn up by the BPA approved operator board members, one of whom is Simon Renshaw Smith, Managing Director of XL Parking Services Limited. And if the BPA rules say it's OK, the signs can stay. If the signage is not clear, then it's not straightforward and it's not honest and decent in my opinion. Honest signage is the crucial thing here. In the three years from 2008 to 2011, Excel issued a total of 11,498 parking tickets to drivers who had parked at the Peel Centre without paying and displaying. That's a pretty big figure. Especially when you compare it to this council-run car park in the centre of town. The car park itself is a similar size to the one at the Peel Centre. But the words pay and display on the signs at the entrance are nine times larger. And compared to XL's 11,500 tickets, the town centre car park issued just under 3,000 tickets to drivers who hadn't paid and displayed in the same time period. Lettering nine times smaller, number of tickets issued nearly four times higher. 
The BPA says its code of practice sets the standard for the private parking industry. But with rules that allow signs like these, isn't it time to raise the standards, BPA? Riz Latif reporting there. With me now, the chief executive of the British Parking Association, Patrick Troy. Mr Troy, a judge says the writing on the signs are too small, one of the, the XL parking signs, and uh, it doesn't seem to bother your members at all. Well, let's get a couple of things clear here, because this is unregulated. The private parking sector in this country, there is no regulation. Uh, and therefore there's no regulation of signage and what we try to do at the BPA is establish some form of signage which motorists can uh, can better understand and that's what yeah. we're trying to do the difficulty is that for every court case that goes against an operator on signage I can show you one which says that the signage is okay okay w would you blame our viewers watching that if they thought that's a very crafty way to make money it's just a cash cow isn't it that small writing well, no, I don't think it is, actually, and really? uh, your reporter conveniently missed the, the pictogram on the tariff board, which yeah. clearly shows much bigger uh, a hand with a coin in it. And, of course, people who are less, less able to re read uh, find that a lot easier to understand. OK, pay and display, it's, it's less than half an inch, which is what I'm holding up now. And remember, a driver is driving past it, mm. and so they're going into the distance with this half an inch which says pay and display and you've had 11,000 penalty mm. charges in the last few years because people didn't see it and didn't didn't pay yeah. and display. Well, you know the statistic that... Could, that no, wait a minute. Have you got an elderly aunt? Would she see that? Well, I think no, if no, I had an elderly... Me. If I, I haven't got an elderly aunt, so I can't... You haven't. So um, do you know somebody elderly who would be quite happy to see that? It's, it's half an inch. I think and they they're would they're much, driving much more it. easily see a pictogram than words, and that's, that's my point. And what's more important is that something like a million people use that car park every year. Do you know how many... People actually pay because they do see the signs, 99.66%. I think if you park in a car park and you use that car park for whatever purpose, you should just check out what the terms and conditions are before you leave the car park. And Thank that's you, what I think Mr. They Troy. Do. I have to finish there. Well, Excel Parking told us the court case we featured was an isolated incident and they believe it was a grave error of judgment. It's also set no legal precedent. They say the signs at the Pill Centre exceeded the BPA standard and the fact that it benefits from the 99.6% adherence shows that the vast majority of drivers understand that it is a pay and display car park. Still to come, Harvey's. There's a sofa sale on, so 